Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. On our last venture into Snap-on cordless offerings, we tried their new CT9080, which many of their dealers coined the Milwaukee Killer for finally offering a high torque with higher specs than the much cheaper Milwaukee M18-2767 high torque. And well, from a power standpoint, they were right. It's currently tied in the number one spot for all of half-inch impact wrenches in North America by our math, but many of you felt, and perhaps justifiably, that at the cost and size of that thing, it's sort of like a, yeah, you'd hope so situation. Well, they must have anticipated that sort of belly aching from you guys because right on the heels of the CT9080, all new for 2022, we have the CT9050. Smaller, lighter, and cheaper than that big chungus 9080, but also smaller and lighter than the Milwaukee High Torque. I mean, not by a mile, but yes, this 9050 comes in at 8.2 inches long, making it noticeably shorter than the Milwaukee's 8.5, and the Milwaukee is already a short-ish high torque. The Rigid, which we'll also be comparing it today versus the 950 because it's a powerhouse, is 8.8 .8 inches long, the same as a DeWalt. And the CT9080 we tested, that was 9.6 inches. So it's lighter and a bit smaller in the Milwaukee, but actually Snap-on calls this a mid-size impact, which is sort of laughable. This is definitely a full-size high torque. There's nothing mid-size about this. Maybe it's because they're trying to pass off the 6.7 inch long CT9010 and 9015s as compacts. Two impacts that barely get out of their own way versus modern comparables. See Tim over at Shop Tool Reviews' great videos on those. And that really makes you think. The CT9080 we tested was impressive. From a power standpoint, it's hard to say otherwise. But yeah, she's got some gravity to her. It seemed that in the past, as snap-on wrenches get smaller, they've become a little bit behind the game compared to brands you can just walk into a hardware store and buy. Maybe that's just the 9010 and 9015's fault though. We'll have to test some more models to know. But this new CT9050, is it more of the same here? Or more of that 9080 flavor of beans? If you look at the specs, she's advertising 800 foot-pounds working torque and 1,000 foot-pounds of bolt breakaway. That's certainly living in the shadow of the 9080's numbers of 1,050 and 1,440. And well, yeah, also the Milwaukee's at 1,000 and 1,400 too. So if the numbers are to be believed, she's not quite designed to take on the likes of Milwaukee despite being the closest in size from the Snap-on lineup. One thing's for sure, there is some coin to be saved going this route. I mean, it's Snap-on and some USA-made parts after all, so not exactly bargain prices we're talking about here. But $464 bare and $635 as a kit, which is between $100 and $350 bucks in savings versus going the 9080 route. And for that measly $635 as a kit, you do get Snap-on's new 5 amp hour battery design as well. The one they've been selling in Europe with these side trigger releases, which is miles better in my opinion than that old top latch one, which is not fun to take on and off. Let's get into the testing though and see if any of these stats are to be believed or if you're just throwing away more money. We're going to be comparing this new 9050 versus the Milwaukee of course as well as the Rigid, which is the most powerful sold at a retail impact wrench as far as we can tell, and the 9080, which shares the top spot with the Mako for being sort of just the tops in power regardless of from where and for what money. Our first test is called Working Torque. Here's the Rigid up against the M18 and Super Size Snappy and Green. So 634 from the Jolly Green Giant, followed by 581 and 572. These are some of the highest scores we've ever seen in a test like this for a half inch. Now for the 9050, is it cut out to hang with the high torques? Or more like mid-size stuff like Snap-on is saying. Its trigger is a bit more responsive than the sluggish 9080, we like that. Shown on screen in black. Six hundred and twenty-eight, six twenty-eight. Yes, seriously. And we ran this thing like five times to be sure. Median on screen as usual. At least so far, this thing is bringing more than the M18 or Rigid, and sort of matching or being in the same group as the 9080. Well, let's hop into reverse then with our max torque 10 second test to sort of settle that. Here's the first three contenders on screen. seven seventy, seven thirty eight, and seven twenty eight, that ninety eighty maintaining its lead. 
Now for the smaller but not small 9050 that seems to be punching above its weight class so far. Seven fifty six again surpassing the Milwaukee and rigid, and that power curve you can definitely tell it's a sibling of the ninety eighty, only really showing a difference once things are stupid tight. The larger hammers and motor of the ninety eighty probably just being able to make the gap. Then all this coming from a smaller diameter tool that's shorter and lighter. Also impressive is just how much this thing will shake you around like a poorly loaded washing machine on spin cycle. Milwaukee got a 7.5 on the wrist breaking score from us, which is pretty high for beating you up plenty. The snap on 9080 got an 8.5, which is even worse, for nearly giving Test's arm PTSD. This 9050 is right in there with them, a solid 8.0, bringing both radial arm action like a rigid and pushback like a Makita high torque. Nothing this size we've seen this level of violence from. I wouldn't call it enjoyable if the bolt is super tight, though so far it seems like things probably don't stay very tight around this thing for long. So here's our best case scenario test to be sure, 15 seconds, batteries fresh off the charger, their best runs. And to really make it a best case scenario sort of situation, we're going to be employing Milwaukee's high output HD 12.0 battery and Rigid's nine amp power octane battery since those are things a brand like Snap-on can't really offer you in pursuit of more beans. So here's their best runs, the Rigid with the nine amp power in Milwaukee with a high output battery. That rigid recently climbed up to a massive 834 with the addition of the 9 amp hour pack in our testing. Super impressive. Now it's last test, the new 9050 in black again. Eight hundred and thirty. This thing is just insane. Just four foot pounds shy of the ridges peak, but it's gain on the curve. Well, that's a sign that this ninety fifty is just bringing it everywhere. I expect on the average power rank chart, this thing is going to be asserting itself real nicely. But before we head there, we have to see just how this ninety fifty stacks up on our leaderboard, even considering its price. Starting just below the ninety eighty for now. And don't ask me why this 9050 image is green, that's the only image they have out yet. The 9050's super impressive runs are turned into points as 63, 76, and 83. At 8.2 inches long, that makes this one of the shortest high torques we've tested, and with 830 foot-pounds to its name, yeah, 101.2 points. That's a cordless record for half-inch impacts. 800 foot-pounds working or tightening torque is all Snap-on is calling out which is what we're doing today, even in reverse. And it gets 100% the max for this column for meeting and surpassing that 800 foot pound claim. Something that the 9080 got dinged here for not really making their marketing claims, although they were pursuing surpassing Milwaukee's advertised claims there as well. $464 is not chump change, but in this company around here, not really like F you money, it gets 26.8 points, not really close to the Milwaukee score up here. Though that totals exactly 450 points, placing it all the way up here near the top, and cordless only being surpassed by the Matco, which makes a ton of power, but is much longer. Given the choice between the two, that's a hard one, I think. The price is similar. Matco is much smoother and doesn't punish you, but the 9050 is just going to fit more places. If we didn't already have a super modern and beefy mid-torque, it would probably have to be the 9050. It's sort of a bit more powerful Thor gun, but cordless. But if you have a capable mid-torque, then maybe the Matco. When looking at their average power rank chart, and that's all about beans and beans alone, the 9050 bumps down the recently seated there rigid for third place with 672 foot-pounds per second, only being slotted just below the two first place slots. Snap-on is massively underselling this gun, let's just be honest for a second. 
maybe to get your dollars on that 9080, maybe so that you buy both, building that gap between the specs and calling the 9050 midsize so that you have that quote unquote midsize and larger 9080. But how annoying would that be? A bit of a cash grab too. You do not need both of these guns, even though the 9080 might bring a little bit more sauce. And what a missed opportunity really though, because in reality, more than anything else in their impact fleet, this is their Milwaukee killer. Smaller, lighter, more power. That's how you topple a giant. This should be their flagship impact that they wave around and try to say they have the best. But they'd be making less coin, of course, by doing so. Now, if it was even less though, like the Rigid, it might be more of a favorite for us. But altogether, you can't say this thing isn't impressive. But do you really need all this? Yes, you need all this power. You do. Despite the famous Honda crank bolt that we showed last time not budging from even the 9080, likely even needing a weighted socket in that case, don't forget things like universal sockets and extensions exist. And we've shown that those independently can account for 25 to 35% in losses each. In a bind where you need to use a swivel and an extension, ouch. Well, even top shelf high torques like this become budget mid torques real quick. Toppling a model like the 2767, a four year old design at this point, may not sound like an earth shattering revelation to you, but hey, this is still the latest from Milwaukee that you can buy. And every year that that's still true, M18 has a steeper hill to climb to be on top again. At the top end of tech, differences are always small, like quarter mile times. It would be silly to begrudge the new fastest stick shift car in the world for only beating the last guy by a tenth of a second. That's still massive on this end of the pool. Even if the guy may have spent double you did to do so. Appreciate you joining us for this one. Click subscribe to join us for the next one. And thanks as always for watching.